Hi guys, welcome back to the channel Machining with Joe. So, we're back in the shop this week and I've been set a little task for my actual Monday to Friday job to do a bit of batch producing. So, I've been tasked with batch producing some alignment pins for work. They're quite a simple design and I thought it would be a really good opportunity to share with you guys how I go about start to finish batch producing these. So, let's give this a whirl. At first glance then, these pins don't actually look too hard to make, but we've got a couple of features that we need to make sure we get nailed for this to make sure we hit the dimensions on this drawing. So first of all, looking at the sort of smooth shank part of the pin, we need to make sure we're hitting that 9mm tolerance that we've got there. We've got a plus or minus 0.2mm either way to play with, so that's one of the critical dimensions on this drawing. Another one of these critical dimensions is just the length of this smooth shank as well. We need to make sure we're hitting round about 25mm. The threaded section on the other hand, that's not too important. If we go over or under by a couple of mil, it's not too big a deal. But the smooth shank is the part that's going to be doing the aligning and that's the part that we've got to hit this dimension bang on. So let's head over to the bandsaw now where we'll be starting off our batch producing. I'm going to be making these pins then out of this EN8 mild steel and in the event we want to harden this, this stuff can be heat treated. So to begin with I've basically just marked a line on here which is 50 millimeters away from the end because this is the overall rough length of what we want these pins to be. Now to be able to cut these to the same length each time I'm going to basically put this up here in the bandsaw and we're going to be setting a stop so every time I can be taking the same depths of cut. So how I go about this normally is I just lower the saw all the way down to sort of just until it's touching the material. I then line up the saw with the markings on my work where I want to cut it and we'll just tighten the vise down. Right, with the work in the vise now all tightened and the blade in line with the cutting mark, I can now come in with my stop and I'm just going to get the end of the stop to touch off on the work. Right, with the stop now in place and the work coming along to where we need it, just going to start cutting these up until I've got a good amount of these. With a load of these pins now all cut down, I can begin to prep them ready for some work on the lathe. Now, along the front of my bench, I've got this really conveniently placed one meter rule. So I've been using this on the last set that I've done to basically almost quality control check these as I go, but also use it as a way of marking them up. So I can butt this up to the end here, and I can see that these pins are pretty much bang on 50 mil. So before I take these over to the lathe, I need to be able to mark down the halfway mark. So just using a pen, I've got the 25 mil line marked here. And I'm just gonna draw on a black line there. Just so I know, that line there is now 25 mil. So when I take this over to the lathe in just two seconds, I can machine up to that line and stop ready for when we flip the part and do the threaded section on the other side. With the pin in the free jaw chuck then, I can machine this down to final dimensions. So originally these pins came through at 10 millimeters and we need this smooth shanked part of the pin to be nine millimeters in diameter and 23 millimeters in length. So I'm gonna machine that down now, probably gonna do like a 0.5 millimeter depth of cut as we go just to try keeping that finish really nice. Right, 
Now, because it's going to take me a few hours to do all of these pins, I'm not going to show you all of that. I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you each process that goes into these, and I'm just going to get you guys to assume that I'm doing the same process on all of the parts before moving over to the next process. So, we've now got this pin down to 9.1 millimeters. So that's within the spec of the drawing, and it's also 23.2 millimeters in length. So I'm happy with that. That smooth shank is all done. Next thing we need to do now is just add a chamfer onto this, and then that pin is done. You can go over to the bench while I do the other ones before moving on to the next section, which will be flipping the part and threading it. Right then, let's move on with the threaded section of these pins. So currently the outer diameter on these is 10 millimeters and we're aiming for an M8 thread down here. So I need to turn these down. I'm gonna aim for about 7.9 millimeters, give myself a little bit of wiggle room when doing the threaded part. So first process, let's turn these down. So I'm gonna stick to a one millimeter depth of cut just cause that turned out really nice on the last part and we have got some good surface finish so <coughs> seems only right to stick to that so one millimeter depth of cut here we go so where before we stopped just shy of the black line this time we're going to be going all the way to the black line because we need the threaded section to be 25 millimeters. And stop it there. So I'm going to come back and do another one mil depth of cut now. Well, I've just gone just over one mil actually, to be fair, because I need to take off 2.1 millimeter of stock so this is 1.1 mil depth of cut that should take this part down to about 7.9 mil which is going to be perfect to run an m8 die down it so with that done now just going to clean the top surface with a flat file. And I'm just going to give this edge here a chamfer just to help the die run on in a minute. So this part now is ready to run the die on. To do this, this is probably the first time you see me do this in the workshop because to be honest it's the first time I really tried it when back to producing these pins and it turned out really well so I'm going to share this method with you. I'm not too sure if this is the safest thing or best thing to do on a lathe. So I'm going to turn the lathe speed right down. Right, that's running at 85 RPM and we're basically going to power feed the die onto the work so uh, I'm gonna bring my tail stock in just until the die is nearly there and then lock that so the really good thing about this new lathe is it's got a break so that allows me to run the die on really close to the end of work and then hit the brake and it pretty much stops this instantly so Gonna lube this up, push the die on, and once it gets going, it's almost gonna self feed itself towards the chuck. And once I get close enough to a point where I think, oh shit, I don't really wanna go anymore, I'm gonna hit the brake, maybe do the last little bit by hand, 
and then power feed it in reverse. So, see how this goes. I'll say see how this goes. I've done this a few times now and it's gone all right on the previous job that I've done. So, 85 RPM. I'm gonna push the die in and away it goes, feeding in. And there we have our threaded part. So, just got about another 14 of these to go. And then I'll have done with all the batch producing we've got to do today. There we have it then guys, a load of batch produced pins. So, not too sure how this video is going to come out because it was a bit of a spare of the moment video. So, let me know in the comments below what you think to this. And also, let me know what you think about the order I've done things in. Would you have done things differently? Or do you think the order I've done things in made complete sense? Again, it would be nice to know down below in the comments what you guys think. But for now, that wraps up this video. Thanks for joining me today. And I'll see you next time back in the workshop where we'll be doing some more machining. Have a good week, guys. See you next time.